Good evening, and welcome to the Episcopal Church of the Resurrection. Holy Eucharist Rite 2 begins in your order of worship. We're on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Please stand as you are able. Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Loving God, we bless your name for Francis Perkins, who in faithfulness to her baptism envisioned a society in which all might live in health and decency. Help us, following her example and in union with her prayers, to, to contend tirelessly for justice and for the protection of all, that we may be faithful followers of Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. If there is among you anyone in need, a member of your community, in any of your towns within the land that the Lord your God is giving you, do not be hard-hearted or tight-fisted toward your needy neighbor. You should rather open your hand willingly lending enough to meet the need, wherever it may be. Be careful that you do not entertain a mean thought, thinking the seventh year, the year of our mission, is near, and therefore view you, your needy neighbor with hostility and give nothing. Your neighbor might cry to the Lord against you, and you would incur guilt. Give liberally and be ungrudging when you do so, for on this account the Lord your God will bless you in all your work, and in all that you undertake. Since there will never cease to be some in need on the earth, I therefore command you, open your hand to the poor and needy neighbor in your land. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for this evening is a portion of Psalm 37. Let's read it in unison. The righteous are always generous in their lending, and their children shall be a blessing. Turn from evil and do good, and dwell in the land forever. For the Lord loves justice. He does not forsake his faithful ones. They shall be kept safe forever. But the offspring of the wicked shall be destroyed. The righteous shall possess the land and dwell in it forever. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. On their return, the apostles told Jesus all that they had done. He took them with him and withdrew privately to a city called Bethsaida. When the crowds found out about it, they followed him, and he welcomed them, and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those who needed to be cured. The day was drawing to a close, and the twelve came to him and said, Send the crowd away, so that they may go into the surrounding villages and countryside to lodge and get provisions, for we are here in a deserted place. But he said to them, You give them something to eat. They said, We have no more than five loaves and two fish, unless we are to go and buy food for all these people, for there were about five thousand men. And he said to his disciples, Make them sit down in groups of about fifty each. And they did so, and made them all sit down. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven, and blessed and broke them, and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. And all ate and were filled. What was left over was gathered up, twelve baskets of broken pieces. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. If the name Francis 
Perkins is somehow vaguely familiar to you. You may remember her vaguely from 20th century American history, a political science class or a women's studies course. Her name could and should appear in any and all of them, as Frances was the first female secretary of labor, the first woman to serve in a U.S. presidential cabinet. What you would be less likely to know from any of those courses is that Frances was also an Episcopalian. Born in Boston in April on 1880 and raised primarily in Massachusetts, Frances attended a classical high school and majored in chemistry and physics at Mount Holyoke College, where she was elected class president, as well as introduced to political activism and the suffrage movement. After graduation, she taught chemistry at several institutions, including Ferry Hall School, which is now Lake Forest Academy in Lake Forest, Illinois. It was during that time she found the Episcopal Church and was confirmed in 1905. Frances was 25 at the time and remained a faithful and active member until her death on May 14th of 1965. Her commemoration on the Episcopal calendar falls tomorrow on May, May 13th. While living and teaching in Chicago, Frances volunteered in settlement houses, a social endeavor with the aim of bringing together different, different economic classes in the hopes of mutual education and breaking down social barriers, an experience that would shape her understanding of social and economic issues for the rest of her life, as well as redirect its course. In 1907, Frances moved to Philadelphia and enrolled at Wharton to study economics. Two years later, she moved to New York, where she entered Columbia and earned a master's in economics and sociology. While there, she became an active member of the suffrage movement. After graduation, she would begin her career in public interest by going to work for the New York office of the National Consumers League, as well as teaching sociology at Adelphi College. In 1911, Frances was personally witness to a tragic fire disaster at the Triangle Shirtweight Factory, Shirt Waste Factory, that's a tongue twister, a company in New York that employed hundreds of workers, most of whom were young women. Just a year before, these same women and girls had fought for and won a 40, or excuse me, a 54 hour work week cap and other benefits with the help of Francis and other labor reformers. When the large 10-story factory caught fire, many workers were trapped. Not only were there no fire escapes, the doors to stairwells and other regular exits were blocked, a common practice at the time to prevent workers from stealing or taking extra breaks. 146 workers died from the fire, smoke inhalation, or attempting to escape by jumping from <coughs> the windows. 23 men and 123 women and girls, the youngest just 14, one of the deadliest industrial disasters in U.S. history. Following that horrific fire, with the support of friends, Francis became a part of the Committee on Safety for the City of New York, a committee formed in no small part as a result of that disaster, working to improve working conditions and fire safety practices throughout the city in an era when working people had few rights or protections and even fewer recourses to change their own conditions. When Frances married Paul Caldwell Wilson in 1913, she kept her maiden name as she didn't want her activism and often critical work for laborers to affect her husband's career. She would end up having to defend that decision in court. The couple had a daughter, but Frances also became the primary breadwinner when Paul began to suffer from mental illness that required significant treatment. Despite opposition and fears that she was a radical, Frances was confirmed as one of three commissioners for the Industrial Commission of New York State, and then in 1929 appointed as sole commissioner of the newly reorganized Industrial Commission by then Governor Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Thanks to her leadership, New York State led the country in reforming state safety and worker protection laws. Factory investigations were expanded to help prevent dangerous conditions as well as insurance fraud, the work week was reduced to 48 hours for women, and minimum wage and unemployment insurance laws were brought to the forefront. She worked vigorously to put an end to child labor and to provide safety for all workers. 
She was also able to earn respect and cooperation from many of her earlier detractors. She would take the same tenacity, passion, and capability with her when Roosevelt would offer her a cabinet position after being elected as president. She served as Secretary of Labor for 12 years, the longest anyone who would hold that office. She played a major role, most crucially, in shaping the New Deal. Legislation signed into law by President Roosevelt, most notably the establishment of Social Security. She was also largely responsible for unemployment insurance, the federal minimum wage, and federal laws regulating child labor. When President Roosevelt died in office, his successor, Henry Truman, appointed another as Secretary of Labor, but asked Francis to serve on the U.S. Civil Service Commission. Somehow, during this service, she also managed to find time to write a memoir of her experience of serving in Roosevelt's administration called The Roosevelt I Knew. Francis left her civil service post in 1952 following the death of her husband and eventually went back to teaching and lecturing which she continued to do right up until her death at the age of 85. Frances served the world, particularly our country, passionately in incredibly difficult times through the Great Depression and throughout World War II, and she remained convicted of her purpose despite the opposition of her perceived inexperience or radicalization of her gender, for refusing to be limited by societal norms, nor by how unpopular the right thing might have been. Throughout her life, Frances credited her faith, her church, and her prayer life with the strength and purpose to guide her and propel her towards public good. During her time in Washington, D.C. as Secretary of Labor, she would regularly take time off and retreat with the All Saints Sisters of the Poor in nearby Maryland. She spoke publicly of how the Incarnation informed her conviction that human beings ought to work with one another and with God to create a just Christian social order, an ideal that she worked towards in all aspects of her life. Even as she worked in the public and political forums for the well-being and safety of others, particularly the working class and poor, she also worked in various capacities with the church under the broad category of what we would think of as a mission. She was an advocate of involvement and activism of the faithful, writing that the special vocation of the laity is to conduct and carry on the worldly and secular affairs of modern society in order that all people may be maintained in health and decency. May we all be inspired by Francis's example. Amen. Our service continues in your order of worship, or on page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer. Please stand and let us read to together reaffirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Eternally begotten from the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form three, found in your service bulletin or on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic church. That we all may be one. 
grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed, especially David, eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In your order of worship, we're on page 360. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. We stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also with you. you. Peace, my friends. Good evening again and again. Welcome. Go ahead, please be seated. Uh, it is great to see all of you this evening, and thanks to those of you who are joining us online and taking the time from your day to pray with us. Uh, we have a lot going on this weekend in the life of the church. Uh, services for member David Williams will begin on Saturday at 1 o'clock. Information will be coming out in an email this evening about that service. And then, of course, on Sunday, we have a different kind of celebration of founder Jim Christopher, as well as celebrating the burning uh, the note of Christopher Commons. I hope that you will be able to join us for both of those services and events. Um, there are probably a lot of other things I am neglecting at this moment in time, but those are the top two. So, um, the rice yeah. and beans is Saturday also. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. So, if you are involved in packaging rice and beans, packaging is as normal on Friday, and distribution in drive-through fashion on Saturday morning. Thanks, Amanda. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave Himself an offering.
Eucharistic Prayer B begins in your order of worship on page 367 of the Book of Common Prayer. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is He's right to give God thanks and praise. And praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly, we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true pastoral lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we forever say this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him. You have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with Francis and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God, the people of God.
post-communion prayer can be found in your order of worship on page 365 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have put us to spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, remember, God made you, God sees you, God knows you, and God loves you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.